All right, so we want to look at two questions that are kind of difficult. So first we're looking at 28.7, and I'm going to use the numbers I had. So we have a charge, it's a negative charge, minus 3.1 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, and it's at the origin. And it's traveling with a speed, or velocity, of 7.5 times 10 to the 4th in the x direction, and 4.9 times 10 to the 4th in the minus y direction. We want to find the B, the magnetic field, at these coordinates. All right, so the basic thing that we're using here is this expression that we looked at at the very beginning of the chapter. And so, just to visualize, here's our system. Right here is the charge at the origin. And I would like to know the magnetic field right here, which is point, point 0.14 minus point 0.33. And this would be my radius vector. So I'm at the origin, and I'd like to know the magnetic field at point P, and my motion is sort of along the lines of where point P is, but it's not parallel. It's in the positive x direction and the negative y direction, and we're not going to show that. So um, there's a couple things involved in doing this problem. One is we have to find R, and we also have to find R hat course those two tasks are related. The vector r goes from the origin to point p and so I could think about finding each component by taking subtracting the coordinates at point p minus the coordinates at the origin. So in the x direction I'd get 0.14 and in the y direction I'd get minus 0.33. So that's my vector r and if you remember, r hat is equal to r over the magnitude of r. So the magnitude of r is found by using the Pythagorean theorem. And if I do that, I find that it's 0, 0 0.3585. And so my r hat, my unit vector, is 0 0.14 in the i direction minus 0 0.33 in the j direction divided by that number, 0 0.3585. And so my unit vector r is 0 0.39 in the i direction minus 0 0.92 in the j direction. So I have pretty much everything that I need now what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to calculate this cross product here using the value for my V and my R hat and then sort of put that in and everything else in this expression, this, are just scalar quantities. So once I find that V cross R hat, I'm going to be able to just multiply everything together and um, Keep in mind, my answer has to be given in the components of the magnetic field, the x, y, and z component. But if you remember the principles of cross products, and you look at our particular problem, our velocity is in the x, y plane, and so is our hat. So remember the cross product of those two vectors will have to be perpendicular to those. And since they're in the x, y plane, our vector is going to have to be in the z direction. So it's just something for us to keep in mind. So I'm going to go to the next page and so I'm just going to write a couple things down to remind us what we're working with. And q is minus 3.1 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. v is equal to 7.5 times 10 to the fourth minus 
4.9 times 10 to the 4th in the j direction. Our magnitude was 0 0.3585, and our hat I found was um, 0 0.39, and mine is 0 0.92 in the j direction. All right, so I wanted to do v cross r hat. So I use my 3 by 3 matrix. I have to be careful because the cross product is not commutative, so it absolutely matters what order I do things in. If I do it in the wrong order, I'm going to be off by a negative sign. And if I do quick inspection, I can see that my I component, because I do these times this, is 0. My Y component, similarly, is going to be 0. And my only non-zero values will be in the K direction, which I already knew, because V and R lie in the XY plane. So the cross product has to be perpendicular to the XY plane in the Z direction. So I get minus 6.9 times 10 to the 4th plus 1.911 times 10 to the 4th. So my answer is minus 4.8, sorry, 989 times 10 to the 4th. It's in the minus z direction. And so now I know that my answer is going to be in the minus z direction. I'm going to put this value in to this equation. Mu naught is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. Q is minus 3.1 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. My V cross R hat was minus 4.989 times 10 to the 4 in the K direction. And then R squared, oh, 4 pi. And then R squared is 0.35. 85 squared. So my answer here is minus 1.2 times 10 to the minus 7 Teslas. That's in the k direction. Bx and by are 0. Um, our answer for our, and when I input it, should be in micro Teslas, which is 10 to the minus 6. And so this would correspond to minus 0 0.12 microteslas. And that's my answer for that problem. So it was a little challenging. There's a couple different tools that maybe we didn't go over as much. We sort of talked about them, but hopefully it's something that you can follow. Now our question, uh, number 20, talks about parallel um, currents and current carrying wires and then the magnetic fields they create. So I have two parallel current carrying wires. The current is in the x direction and the wires are in the x direction or parallel to the x axis. They're carrying the same amount of current in the same direction and the separation between the two is 2A. And so I'm going to be using, what I'm trying to find basically is the total magnetic field at different regions, above the top current, between the two current carrying wires, and then below the bottom one. Our basic expression that we're using is mu naught i over 2 pi r is how we find the magnitude of that magnetic field. And the direction is going to be given by my right hand rule. So first I'm going to call this one. Um, sorry, I want to be consistent with what I did. This is number one, and this is number two. And so let's look at the magnetic fields due to each wire at different areas. I'm going to look at the magnetic field due to current one first. I'm going to put my thumb in the direction of current one in the bottom. 
above the wire, my fingers are curling out of the page. So this is B1. B1 is also out of the page up here. If I go below the wire, B1 is going to be into the page. All right. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the top current. We're going to call that current V2. Again, I'm going to point my thumb in the direction of the current. Above the wire, my um, fingers are going to be pointing out at me. And so the, the magnetic field comes out of the page above that current. But below it, it's going to go into the page. And that counts for both these reg regions. All right, so now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this picture to help me figure out if I should um, be uh, adding or subtracting the magnetic fields. Um, another thing that is helpful, they tell us this is the y direction. And that means then out of the page is going to be in the positive z direction into the page is going to be the negative z direction, and I need to keep that in mind. In part A, I want to find the magnetic field midway between the two wires. And in between the two wires, the magnetic fields are going in opposite directions. So B total is going to be B1 minus B2. I made B1 positive because it's out of the page, and that's in the positive z direction. B1, if we're snap dab in the middle of those two wires, the distance from wire 1 is A, so it's mu naught I over 2 pi A, but then for B2, which is in the negative Z direction, so I give that a negative sign, mu naught I, that's also A units away from the top wire, so it's 2 pi A. These just cancel out, so in between there's 0. B is above the top wire, and it's A from the top, so it's A units above the top wire, so B total. Now if I look at my picture, I see that above the top wire, both of them are coming out of the page, so it's going to be B1 plus B2. And so B1 is going to be B not, mu naught I over 2 pi times 3A. That's the total distance from the bottom wire. And from the top wire, it's mu naught over 2 pi A. If I take out mu naught I over 2 pi A, I have 1 third plus 1. So that's 4 thirds times mu naught I over 2 pi a. So b total for that wire is going to be 2 mu naught i over 3 pi a. And this is in the positive z direction for this one. And finally, I'm not going to redraw it, but c is real similar. It's a below bottom wire. And so it's actually going to be exactly the same as the one we just did, except that for B total, we are adding them. B1 and B2, if you remember, are both in the same direction, but now they're into the page when they're below the wire. So both of these magnetic fields are negative. So I'm going to get minus mu not a i over 2 pi a for wire 1 minus mu naught i over th 2 pi times 3a for wire 2. This looks exactly like we just did except it's negative so our answer is going to be exactly the same as the previous one except it's going to have a negative value negative 2 thirds mu naught i over 3 pi a. All right. So hopefully that those two problems, seeing them worked out is helpful.